Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jamaatul Mu'mineen, I have been advised by um, Sheikh uh, Yusuf to watch my time. I'll try my best. I'll see how far I can go. Um, but when you are in teaching, in the education, then you feel that you have to share as an act of ibadat all that you know. It's not possible. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate. Blessings of God and peace be upon our Habibi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family. O God, O exalted one, O gentle one, O all knowing one, Thou art my Lord, and thy knowledge is sufficient for me. What an excellent Lord is my Lord. What a wonderful sufficiency is my sufficiency. So our plea to my beloved Allah is for protection. For all our protection. In our movements, in our moments of rest, in our words and in our desires and passing thoughts. From any doubts and suppositions. O oh Allah, expand for me my rest with assurance and ease for me my task and untie the knot in my tongue so that I may be understood, may be understood by everyone. So a special thank you to the Imam and the leadership at Masjid al-Haq for inviting me to speak to the topic, the need for exemplary quality education. I suppose it is best to start with what people like to forget, but nevertheless needs stating. This topic has to be contextualized and historicized. It needs to be understood within the narrative of the global Quran. So the concepts of exemplary quality education, these are recurring refrains in the global Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves all those qualities. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exemplary and quality. So, the question to ask is, do we see this in our Muslim schools? Are the excellent outcomes of Muslim learners God-aware only, or are they God-aligned, or are they Godly-driven? These are three important questions, because I have to ask myself that every day. Is it my action? Is it my talking with people? Is it my interaction with people? Am I only being God-aware? Am I being God aligned or am I being God -aligned driven? Now, of course, it's a long, long road yet for me to be God -aligned driven. We try. We all have to try. It's aspirational. It's a good thing. So, the big question is are Muslim schools, in fact, modeling the values of the noble Quran? Maybe. Are they applying the prophetic revolutionary sira of our Habibi Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Maybe. Or are they apartheid shelters? And at worst, are some of these Muslim schools madab promoters? I want us all to be aware that the first revelation took place in a cave, and it gave us a 21st century knowledge economy revelation. And it said simply, read, read in the name of the Lord that has created you. Of course, reading is not just a technical act of reading, as I always say. It's also reading the world. Think about that. The, the methodology of an Islamized-driven approach to quality um, education, uh, because that's what the topic says, um, and critical thinking is implied, is based on the, on the Quran. And it's interesting that there are 13 verses that are revealed in the Quran on um, critical thinking and quality thinking. Now according to Usman Najata in his text in Quranic Psychology, and this is a very important lesson that we have to learn, if whatever we're trying to do, learn from the Amiya, learn from those who are more learned in the field and have given their lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he chooses Nabi Ibrahim Salaam. And he says there are four steps to critical thinking, which is quality thinking and uh, of course exemplary education. 
and he contextualizes this um, in the actions of our beloved Habibi, uh, Habibi Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he says there are four criteria. The one is in every action that you take, is there spiritual depth? Is what you are doing, is it for Allah? Where does Allah appear in your intention, in your action? He says there should be moral virtue. And he says there should be a breadth of knowledge. <coughs> so the more I get into Islam, the more I realize what a beautiful way of life this is. How much more there is to learn. You've got to ask Allah for an extended life to learn more about the beauty of the deen. So that you can get to know the authorial voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he also says there should be a transfer formative um, approach, it should be a transformative skill. And you should learn to invite dialogue with people by using wisdom. So then, do our Muslim schools, in fact, when they are talking about exemplary education and when they're talking about quality education, remember now, the Council for Higher Education advises us that it is better to have an idea of what is quality education than to have a definition of quality education. Think about that. Because if you have an idea of what quality education is, you're striving to go higher still. But if you have a definition of quality education, you hit the ceiling and you get stuck there. So when we are then talking about our schools, our Muslim schools in particular, and we're talking about quality, perhaps a route to take is for them to get involved in spiritual service learning and not just raising uh, funds for Pakistan as they should and for um, hungry people as they should. But it is more than that. It's reflecting on intentionality and so on and so forth. So I'm just raising that to soften the ground for issues that I'm going to raise later on. And so when we're looking at our schools, we've got to ask ourselves, are they centers of excellence that are posing as fact factories or what? Or are these centers of mutaki thought leadership? So later on I'll, I'll, I'll explain the importance of that to, to all of us. So the Quran places an inordinate amount of uh, waiting on thinking that draws us closer to God Almighty. Because by thinking we realize our position as servants and we understand our function as Khalifs to Allah Almighty. And so our job is actually to do both our living and our dying and our breathing and our sacrifice as the Noble Quran says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, by thinking, you're actually liberating. I mean, Bob Marley said it so beautifully, you know, free yourself from mental slavery. And that is so true. So what will tell you that you are in fact freeing yourself from mental slavery is when you don't deify other people, when you don't deify process, and not let them godlike. And so, according to Najati, he says that to think and to reason in the Quran, Allah uses beautiful expressions like, don't you think about it? Hopefully you think. If you think, that conditional clause, if, is so powerful. For people who have reason, for those who think. And so the Quran uses the word akko some 40 times and derivatives of it. And so this shows the importance of thinking, of quality education, of it being enhanced in um, um, our schools. Of course, God will raise the, the, the dignity of the people who act and think and those who work as servants for God Almighty. And Allah will reduce you if you are actually more into promoting hate and division. So what are the essential key, uh, principles then for quality education? Because that's what really what I've been asked to talk about. Well, first of all, you have to treat the Quran as a canonical text, as the most important text, as the only text, because that will give you knowledge for action, 
in favor of Allah and that will also allow you to think reflexively for knowledge about your action. Then you have to have a makasid approach or makasid practice for spirituality because that will help in transformation. Now, of course, the makasid approach, um, there are five objectives of the Sharia. There's a protection of life, there's a protection of property, there's a protection of health, protection of religion and its promotion and advancement, and the protection of everyone's dignity. So we're going to ask ourselves, have we in fact been applying a classic approach, or have we in fact reduced it to um, hate promotion? Then the other thing quality education should promote is modeling the um, prophetic revolutionary sunnah in practice. The next thing is you have to put the primacy of the will of God Almighty in everything that you do, in your talking. Where does Allah feature in that? Because that is an act of ibadah. And you have to have bold, mutaki thought leadership. Do our schools create those in our learners? And then you have to channel Allah's Quranic commands. And you have to be justice-centric and non-racial and non-sexist. And you have to be culture fair and anti violent So do our schools in fact promote that? And so you have to promote Quranic divine th thinking, it's hikmah, and mutaki agency. I've always done this. We have to engage the Ummah to promote Islamic meaning-making as an act of ibadah. And so we also have to make sure that we stop this nonsense of inter- and intra-Muslim fighting. On a Monday night when the doorbell rings, the Tabrik Jamaat comes into my house, I welcome them. In the same way I will welcome anyone else of any other school of thought. Why can't you? And so we must stop this nonsense of inter and intra Muslim uh, fighting and spreading of hate and division. Do you know how anti Allah and anti Islamic that act is? There's a huge debate along that. Sometime I'd like to share with you my thoughts on that. So we have to promote solidarity and we have to promote a critical co presence. We have to support our learners to deepen their voice. And because that is the manner and the trust of the second tier leadership. And we have to create Muslims who are mukmins. And we have to promote learners' life skills. Um, as I tie up the loose ends now, Yusuf, I need to say advisedly, we need to apply the ethics of Islamic disagreement. We must know how to disagree with people. You don't disagree with a person, but rather you disagree with a thought. And you have to give evidence as to why you disagree. So those then are a few of the 12 pointers I thought I'd raise in the short time that's given, because you have shortchanged me by two minutes uh, with your long introduction, but it's okay, I can hear Muslims should forgive actually. And so uh, we'll talk about it again the next time on the show. But those are the 12 pointers I thought I'd raise to ask our Muslim schools to, as they say locally, that people must catch a wake up about who are we as Muslims, what is Islam, and what uh, makes for a Muslim. So I thought I'd leave it at that for now, Yusuf, and I um, will probably uh, pick up. Um, pardon? I will elaborate uh, next time, inshallah. Um, yes, I will, definitely. And so I wish to thank the, uh, the organizers for allowing me the opportunity to speak here. And as I said, people, I'm not against uh, Muslim schools. We need it. But what I am concerned about, and notice I haven't said against, what I am concerned about is what is their purpose? How do they promote a Mutaki thought leadership? How do they promote caring Muslims? And how do they, and to use the Institute of Islamic Services uh, logo, how do they in fact um, enjoy doing a service to humankind, regardless of whether people are Muslims or not? Remember, the Medina Constitution respected people, whether they were so called polytheists, or whether they were Christians, or whether they were Jews, or whether they were part-time Muslims, as they say, or whether they were fully committed Muslims. 
So I need for us to consider those issues that I've raised. I wish for all of you only the best, and may Allah raise our status as committed Muslims, as aware Muslims, as thinking Muslims, as caring Muslims. I thank you again, and I wish the uh, organizers of this mosque only the best. May Allah raise your status, and may when the transition happens, may you enjoy the banquet of eternity in the garden of immortality. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa